Welcome to Wednesday, July the 29th. I'm Pastor Jim Krieger from Holy Cross Lutheran Church and School in Saginaw, Michigan, joining you for our celebration of a traditional weekly worship service as we continue our sermon series on the Lord's Prayer. For those who have received the lyrics for our hymns today, please turn to those. And if you have a hymnal at home and are able to follow along, then please join us in singing our opening hymn, Hymn 719, I Leave All Things to God's Direction. Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins 
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who in loving kindness sent your only Son to deliver sinners from a current condemnation, grant us an extra measure of faith and trust during times of trial and testing, that we may never fall from you or doubt you, but that we may see your powerful hand at work to deliver and rescue us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Join me as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now please join me as we continue with our sermon hymn, hymn number 766. Today we sing verse 8. <laughs> Mercy and peace be yours from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we grow up, we receive all sorts of advice and from those who have lived much longer, words of wisdom. Think of the times that you have heard such advice and wisdom when you have come down with even the common cold or some other cold or illness? Do you remember some of the suggestions that were quick to be offered by those around you? We've all heard them. Get plenty of rest, drink lots of fluids, increase your amount of vitamin C, avoid crowds, and wash your hands. And after doing those things, cold after cold, event after event, what were your expectations? Like most of us, you probably expected that you would begin feeling better sooner than you expected, maybe even in a matter of several hours, or at least by the next morning or day. But as many of us learned, as we grew up, some colds just don't go away that quickly. And unfortunately, some colds tend to get worse before they begin to get better. And then sometimes you find you have to call your doctor and make an appointment. But then that doctor's visit becomes the setup for another list of expectations. As you left the doctor's office, perhaps receiving a shot 
or a written prescription, or maybe it was sent online to your pharmacy, and you couldn't wait to go get that prescription and expected that some hours later you would begin feeling better. For many years now, we have spent every day of our life and every hour of that day in a world, especially a nation, of instant service. Get everything the way you want it. With a single smartphone and just enough applications, you can control the temperature and the lighting in your house before you even return home. You can order a meal on the way home. You can pick it up. From anywhere, you can access the latest news or watch any movie or catch up on any sporting event you want. You can take care of banking and even some investments. You can order just about anything you want online and get it the way you want. Same day or for a little extra money in a day or two. As a nation and as people, we have become so used to getting exactly what we want and when we want it. And many people over the last couple of generations call improvements like this progress. But these daily expectations, our daily experiences in a material world, have created real challenges and sometimes roadblocks in our spiritual relationship with God. A relationship that is not instant service because God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Have you ever offered prayers in a time of illness and honestly expected to begin feeling better soon, if not at least the next day? How many prayers does God the Father hear asking for a cure for the disease, immediate relief from illness, rather than the prayers to Almighty God asking for the strength to endure and to remain faithful through it? How many times does God hear prayers from a person seeking a new job that expects to have that new job in a day or two because they have offered that prayer to God. Where is spiritual patience, perseverance, and personal discipline in a world, nation, and lifetime of instant service? Where is strength of faith, and where is trust in times of trial and testing? in a world where we can seek to avoid many of the obstacles that cause us personal grief and hardship. Our sinful flesh and the sinful world that we live in do not train us to be patient and endure suffering and trials. So in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught us to pray, deliver us from evil. And that presents a direct challenge to our normal way of thinking and living in this world. Because we don't get to attach our timeline, but we give ourselves to God's direction and His will and His purpose. We are tempted at times to believe that our experiences in life aren't only unique, but there are times we truly believe we have it worse than others, or no one has had it as bad as we do. I reference you to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, where in the life that St. Paul reminds those who are reading his letters, for the sake of Jesus Christ, he was willing to endure more than anyone and any of us will ever endure for the sake of the gospel. 
in the few short years of his missionary journeys, he counted 11 times he was imprisoned for the sake of the gospel. He was physically beaten and bludgeoned eight separate times. He was stoned by a mob and left for dead. He was shipwrecked three times and set adrift on the open sea. For the sake of Christ, he was constantly on the move. He was in danger everywhere he went, even from those who claimed to follow Christ. He recalled how so many times he was hungry and thirsty. He was cold, often sleeping outdoors. All of these trials and tribulations and testings he was willing to endure because of his faithfulness to God, his calling, his passion for sharing the life and ministry of Jesus, no matter what the cost. What could have easily brought a clear end for St. Paul and his beliefs, his faith, his teachings, was used by God the Father for the strengthening of this believer, this evangelist, this missionary, this hero of faith. In the midst of so many temptations to give up, in the midst of so many hardships faced by those who just would not listen, in the midst of all the challenges he faced over thousands of miles during his few years of missionary journeys, through all of the disappointments he felt as a missionary, St. Paul delighted in his weaknesses. He delighted in the insults, he delighted in the hardships, he delighted in the persecutions, because he knew the source of his strength and endurance. God the Father provided Paul, as he provides with all of us, the strength we need for every moment and the perseverance to endure for the glory of God. Listen to these words recorded by St. Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. To keep me from becoming conceited, a thorn was given me in the flesh. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Our lives right now are filled with hardships. Many challenges, many temptations. What are the greatest struggles that face you in this time of a global pandemic? of restrictions, of guidelines, of recommendations? What challenges have come and touched your heart of faith and reliance and dependence on God? What exactly have you prayed for and expected immediate results rather than ask for God's patience, for his timing, for his strength alone, and for the words to give hope to others rather than simply be an example of falling into temptation and dismay. 
How do your personal responses to the hardships of this time show the depth of your belief, of your faith, of your trust in God who provides every day for all of your needs? Are your prayers seemingly selfish like St. Paul's when God gave him a thorn in the flesh to test him and Paul simply asked that it be taken out? But then he heard the words that you heard today from God. My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. When we offer prayers to our Heavenly Father to remove a challenge, remove a temptation, remove an illness, Are we really asking God's will to be done? Or are we asking our will to be done? When we offer our prayers, praying as we have celebrated in a past sermon, thy will be done, that is when we give the evidence of trust, of hope, of faith in our Heavenly Father to provide what he already knows we need for each moment and the strength to persevere and demonstrate the trust of a child of God. I close with this illustration. A story was once told of an elder of a church who also served as the head football coach of the local high school. Within the short span of eight years, he survived countless treatments for lung cancer. His wife was nearly killed in a car accident. He received treatment and surgery for an enlarged heart. He underwent surgery for the replacement of defective heart valves. And shortly after his heart surgery, his mother died from a stroke. In the midst of all of these, personal challenges, struggles. This elder went to his pastor, his spiritual leader, his shepherd, and simply asked, how do I pray? The pastor's response to this man of God, one of the spiritual assistants in the church, was immediate. The pastor said, Pray this way, Lord, have mercy. This spiritual man of God received his crown of eternal life only eight months later. But his character of faith, his testimony of hope, his life of endurance gave strength to the many who knew him and witnessed all of these challenges in just those few years. What can you learn from St. Paul and from so many other heroes of the faith in Scripture who endured far more hardships than we will ever know? And even in the midst of all of their bitter struggles in life, and for the sake of the gospel, they did not turn away from the faith. Their trust did not waver. They turned to God and prayed his will be done, that he have mercy on them. We learn in our life of faith, in especially these very challenging times, that when we pray in the Lord's Prayer, deliver us from evil, we're not simply asking God to immediately take away all of our trials and temptations, our testings and our struggles. This simple petition is not seeking the easy way out, but all of our prayers during times of temptation and testing, challenge and disappointment, 
must only be offered with the faith of a child of God who simply utters these words, Lord, have mercy. Amen. May the peace of God that passes all our human understanding guard and keep your heart and mind in that one true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. We bow our heads for a time of prayer. Merciful God, we humbly implore you to cast the bright beams of your light upon your church, that we, being instructed by the teachings of the blessed apostles, may walk in the light of your truth and finally attain to the light of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and most merciful God, in this earthly life we endure sufferings and death before we enter into eternal glory. Grant us grace at all times to subject ourselves to your holy will and to continue steadfast in the true faith to the end of our lives, that we may know the peace and joy of the blessed hope of the resurrection of the dead and the glory of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Providing, Father, keep this nation under your watchful care. We pray your extra gifts of humility and strength for our leaders, that they would daily seek your wisdom and by your grace work for the good of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing, Father, we lift up our prayers for those who suffer from illness and adversity, the hospitalized, those who are recovering, those who are homebound, and those we lift up from our hearts. May they all know healing and strength which only you can provide grace and patience during their time of affliction and distress, and grant an increase of your blessing of health and strength, peace and comfort to all the first responders and medical professionals who rise each day to selflessly serve the many needs of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, stretch forth your powerful arm and protect and strengthen all in the armed forces who serve day and night to protect our nation and many around the world. Be their rock and refuge in times of peace and hostility and give them the courage they need for each day of service. When their tour of duty is complete, please bring them safely home to their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, during these troubling times in our cities, states, our nation and world, we ask even more for your powerful Holy Spirit to lead all of us sinners to call upon your name, to humble ourselves, to pray and seek your face, and to turn us from our sinful, selfish ways, and to live to the glory and praise of your holy name, so that the lost around us may see by our example of faith the fruits of the faith that works in us, that they may be so influenced by our example in words and actions that they themselves begin offering prayers to your holy throne in heaven. Prayers that are offered in the holy name of Jesus. That through the work and increase of faith, they may come to know the forgiveness of their sins. And that increased healing may come to our land and to the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We close our service today in the words of one of the most beloved of Christian hymns, Hymn 710, The Lord's My Shepherd. Good night,